in the 1700s, three major nations really started to become uh, large role players in the colonization of America. You had, of course, England, you had Spain, France, and uh, let's not forget the Native Americans who were here before all of them. Well, before Georgia was a colony, it was considered an uncharted territory or a buffer zone between Spanish Florida and the southern British colonies. Well, in order to combat the spread of Spanish influence, uh, they were building missions all throughout Georgia. The British established this place. This is Fort King George, and it was established in 1721. So before we head out, I uh, have a little museum here, and this gives you a good glimpse into what the uh, fort would have actually looked like here at uh, Fort King George. And here's another example. That structure there, that would be called the blockhouse, and that was where uh, they would keep their supplies and things like that, and you can also see it would uh, be a pretty good defensive structure. And then again, you can kind of see right on the Black River here, and then they would build their ramparts, their blockhouse in the center, and then it would have a moat around, uh, reinforced by palisades, and then you have a marsh on the other side. So it was a pretty strong position, but apparently life here was uh, pretty miserable, and uh, they're gonna touch on that here shortly. Oh wow, so this, it, it's a cannon, but it was called a swivel gun because it would sit on a post and it would be able to swivel, usually controlled by a soldier. But I don't know if you can see the writing here zoom in a little bit but this one and a half bore swivel gun recovered from the Altamaya River uh, by Mr. Lucky Lowe dates from the early 1700s and could have been in use as late as the 1750s. That is pretty interesting. Pretty well preserved too. Again here's your footlock musket and you can see your barrel at the end. Well you can put this guy on it. This is a socket bayonet. Now this one wasn't found here but this one does date back to the 1700s. That is uh really interesting to see <laughs> and uh, apparently in January of 1726 a mysterious fire severely damaged the blockhouse palisades and destroyed the barracks Now, when the British established Fort King George in 1721 uh, the Spanish weren't pleased because uh, this territory of Georgia before it was Georgia was a highly disputed land and the British wanted to fortify this position as a uh, buffer between uh, British Florida in the uh, English Carolina colonies. So Fort King George sits outside of the present day city of Darren, Georgia. And apparently, Colonel Robert G. Shaw, commander of the 54th Massachusetts, who was uh, an all African American unit in the American Civil War, well, they helped capture and burn Darien on June 11th, 1863. That's interesting, I did not know that. Now we mentioned that life at Fort King George was pretty tough. And uh, this place was considered a hardship post. And the British soldiers under the command of Colonel James Barnwell uh, would uh, be the first ones to be stationed here. And after a year, 140 British soldiers and officers, including Barnwell, would uh, die from various diseases like malaria and dysentery. And uh, this is some of the uh, markers here upon which they were buried. Let's go check out this sign here, see what this says. To the soldiers of Fort King George, who gave their lives in defense of the Southern English frontier in America during the occupation of this little outpost from 1721 to 1727. Uh, they were buried here upon this bluff. Fort King George is built on the low ground 200 yards east of here and was the first English settlement in the land which is now Georgia. More than 140 British soldiers lost their lives in this first planned effort to hold the uh, southeast from the English. Wow. So we mentioned how Georgia, before it became Georgia, was a disputed land between the French, British, English, and of course the Native Americans that resided here. Well, the Spanish attempted to uh, establish uh, missions throughout Georgia. And uh, here's one of the uh, foundations from one of those missions. Now again, the British would establish their outposts here. You had Fort King George here, and then several miles east of here, you had Fort Frederica, which we visited in an earlier video. But uh, yeah, so this is uh, pretty neat to see. I didn't realize that a Spanish mission would be so close to uh, Fort King George. Just giving you a closer look at the foundation here. 
you can see how it's kind of uh, like oyster shells and various other rocks and things like that. Well, this is called tabby. And uh, tabby would be a form of shells and other sand and things like that. And then uh, they would pour it in forms and it would harden. And uh, yeah, you would get your uh, strong foundation. And of course, you know, 400 years later, and here's the foundation still. Pretty neat. It's giving you a closer look. You can just see all the shells mixed in. And uh, again, once that would harden, it would form a pretty strong foundation. So we're making our way out to the fort. And uh, this, I thought this was pretty interesting. So as we mentioned, the town of Darien was established outside of the fort. And uh, apparently in the 1800s, uh, it became a pretty big lumber uh, community. So here's the fort, we're up here. And you can kind of see old canals that they had to transport the logs and things like that. I thought that was pretty neat. And here's some of the ruins from when this place was a prominent logging community. It's pretty neat. So you have 200 years of saw milling on top of the uh, fort you can see in the background there. And here's some of the uh, mechanisms that they would have used. So we're heading out to the fort on this uh, pretty cool trail that kind of goes through some of the swampland, but you can kind of see uh, it's not really hard to envision that malaria would have been a problem here. But again, I just wanted to show you kind of an overview of Fort King George. So this was the site of old Fort King George built in 1721 by Colonel John Barnwell of South Carolina under British Royal orders. This tiny cypress block house, 26 feet square with three floors and a lookout in the gable from which the guard could watch the uh, surrounding area. And again, you had 140 officers and soldiers lost their lives in that first year due to diseases. Um, this place didn't really see any combat, at least what I can find. Uh, so the post was uh, abandoned in 1727 after that fire. A man by the name of James Oglethorpe, who's a very prominent uh, Georgian, uh, would discover Georgia and establish uh, Savannah in 1733. And uh, he kind of reestablished Fort King George with the help of uh, some Scottish Highlanders that he recruited from Scotland. Now they would establish a village here and they would call it New Inverness and they would later be, uh, be named Darien. Um, so after he established Fort King George, he would establish Fort Frederica, which is a few miles east of this location, closer to the coast. Um, and just so you know, if you've been following along, we already uh, did a video of that location. So if you want to watch that video, the link is in the description below. Now, Oglethorpe's uh, experiment here at Fort King George would be far more successful than the first British experiment here in 1721. And with the help of the Scottish Highlanders, they would establish a, a unit here, and it would be called the Highland Independent Company. It would also be called Oglethorpe's Regiment of Foot. And this unit uh, would eventually become the 42nd Regiment of Foot, which is uh, the Black Watch Highlanders. Uh, they would evolve, and then they would see a lot of action in the French and Indian War. But uh, so this unit, at least part of the unit, would start here. And this unit would see combat um, when the Spanish invaded uh, what is now Georgia in 1742. Forces from this fort helped fortify the forces at Fort Frederica in the Battle of Bloody Marsh, and the British would win and uh, drive the Spanish out of Georgia, thus uh, allowing the British to lay claim to Georgia. But uh, we're getting closer to the fort, so let's go in and check out this blockhouse and see what we can find. And here's the recreation of Fort King George. Now, that big structure there, that's the blockhouse like we saw inside. And that's where they keep their supplies dry, or at least attempt to. Uh, there's a few barracks over here. And up top, you can kind of see those holes. Those are loopholes that allowed soldiers and uh, whoever was on guard duty to fire out if they saw any uh, incursions on the fort. So we're right on the banks of a river here. And that river goes all the way around the fort. And you can kind of see the uh, makeshift moat here and the uh, earthen ramparts along with the palisades you have a guardhouse there and right there he is an example of the swivel cannon that's one of the cannons that they recovered that we saw inside in the uh, museum so we're making our way into the fort now and you go right into the blockhouse all right stairs and camera don't mix but I made it. Pretty cool. A lot more room than I envisioned. 
and you can kind of see. So we're just on the first level here, obviously, and a uh, pretty good view. And here's one of the artillery pieces here. And, oh look, a fire extinguisher. So they were very fire conscious, even though this place did burn down in 1727. And here's those smaller loophole positions. And again, you can just kind of see sticking a rifle out, it would be very hard to hit the uh, soldier behind this loophole. But you can easily fire out and uh, hit your target. So we're making our way down to the first level of the blockhouse. Let's give you some perspective. We came in there. So down here would be, it looks like maybe a jail, but it can also be uh, where your powder would be stored and uh, other things like that. Now maybe this is the jail. <laughs> Very nice accommodations with the uh, shell floor. Now you can imagine, if you can see that with the glare, you would take two or three soldiers to man each of these guns and it would probably be pretty cramped, especially when you have multiple gun positions. But uh, yeah, so you would have more artillery pieces here. And again, your loot poles go all the way around. And let's make our way up to the uh, third level here. Very cool. Now it looks like it's obviously converted into um, some sort of classroom or living history uh, area. But up here again, you have your loopholes all the way around. So you can cover every direction. And give you another look. Nice. It's a nice view too. So this is also pretty interesting. So here we are, obviously, but you can see this outer circle. Now that was a quarter mile around the fort and that was the swivel cannon range. And the cannons in the blockhouse, that gave you a range of almost a mile. That's pretty interesting. So again, this fort in its uh, current position, it kind of controlled the uh, fork of this river. So here's another cool little detail here that I can easily be overlooked. But if the enemy breaches your walls and uh, you're taking fire, there's a point where you can't, let me catch up there, you can't aim down and see underneath the blockhouse. Well, you can easily lift this piece up and now any soldiers below you, you can uh, hit and cover it back up and reload your musket. That's pretty cool. So something that I wanted to point out is you can kind of see the artillery positions, obviously, but you can see all the cannons are on a platform. Well, if time permits, they, uh, they built these platforms so the guns wouldn't sink into the soft soil, especially being right by the river. So they built these platforms, which allowed the gun to roll and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about it sinking into the earth. So we're making our way out of the blockhouse now and and again, another closer look at one of the swivel cannons here. You can see the handle and how it would swivel. And then if you need to reload, you can easily reach over and reload your shot. So this is really cool so far, a great visual. And we're making our way into what is called, commonly called the parade. And now we're gonna check out some of these buildings behind me. I believe this is the barracks here. All right, coming up to what I believe is the barracks. Let the light catch up here for a sec. Oh yeah. So this is uh, an example of what one of the barracks would have looked like. You see you have your bunks and uh, have your tables in the center for recreation and eating and things like that. And then you'd have your fireplace on each side pretty cool pretty cool little building and one of the benefits to being right on the river here is hopefully you get somewhat of a uh, nice breeze but uh yeah pretty cool and you have your bell if there's enemy approaching
interesting. Oh, wow. So this one's a little different, obviously a lot smaller. And then you have, looks like there's a bunk up there. I'm not sure, maybe this is for the officers. Usually their accommodations are a tad nicer than the uh, enlisted folk. And looks like another officer's quarters. Living the life of luxury here. Well, you have uh, 20 or 30 guys in the uh, enlisted barracks at a time. And there's your enlisted barracks there. Really cool. They did a really good job with this place. And then again, here's your block house there. <laughs> this is pretty neat. So they have a uh, little tiny mortar here. And you can kind of see these handles on the side here. So the soldiers would carry this thing. Now don't let that size fool you. This thing would be extremely heavy. But the difference between a mortar and a regular artillery piece is an artillery, uh, this cannon would fire a shell pretty much out and it would follow kind of the trajectory of the earth. Well, the mortar, when that would fire, that would shoot straight up and then it would come down on top of its target, in theory. Kind of like the uh, modern day javelin that's fired from the shoulder. And we're up on one of the outer walls here. Here's one of the little guard towers. That's the front gate there. So that was Fort King George. Pretty diverse little area, and uh, as always, I learned a ton. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.